بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for favoring us by allowing us to reach this month, the month of Ramadan. We ask him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to aid us and you in performing righteous deeds and to allow us and you to complete it with righteous actions. The Muslim is perpetually upon goodness, especially if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favors him with encountering the month of Ramadan and other than it from the seasons of worship and grants him success and taking advantage of it, and completing it uh, with what has been legislated. This is in opposition to the deprived people, whose lives are a curse for them. Days and months of goodness pass upon them, while they are heedless, running away. So the person either utilizes his time in good, so the benefit comes back to him, or he utilizes his time in evil, so the harm comes back to him. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, كل الناس يغدو فباعي نفسه فمعتقها أو موبقها. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, everyone begins his day as a vendor, a vendor of his soul, either freeing it or bringing about its ruin. The person himself is the one who cultivates his soul and presides over it. If he takes care of it in goodness and he purifies it by way of obedience, utilizing time for what which uh, for that which it ben- which benefits it, then he has done well in caretaking, the caretaking of his soul, firstly, then the caretaking of others. However, if he squanders his soul, then he will never take care of others. If he leaves his soul to whatever it wills from sins and laziness, then he will lose his soul. And if the person loses his soul, then what will he thus preserve if he couldn't preserve himself? His soul is the most valuable thing that he has. Due to this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, what, uh, he said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says what means? And by the soul, and he who perfected him in proportion, indeed, he succeeds who purifies his own self. Purifies it, meaning he purifies it from sin and disobedience, and protects it, or he perfects it, by way of acts of goodness and good deeds. This is the one who purifies his soul. On the authority of Abu Malik al-Ash'ari, Allah ta'ala anhu, who said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, At-tahuru shatru al-iman, walhamdulillah, tamla'u al-mizan, wa subhanallah, walhamdulillah, tamla'ani aw tamla'u ma bain as-samawati wal-ard, wa salatu nurun, wa sadaqa burhan, wa sabru diya' wa al-Qur'anu hujjatan laka aw alayk, كل الناس يغدو فباعي نفسه فمعتقها أو مبيقها. Purity is half of iman. Alhamdulillah fills the scales. Subhanallah. And alhamdulillah, they feel that which is between the heavens and the earth. Prayer is light, a light, an illuminating light. Charity is evidence. Patience is a radiant light. The Qur'an is either a proof for you, يعني, an argument on your behalf, or against you. Everyone begins his day as a vendor of his soul, either freeing it or bringing about his ruin. Reported by Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, وَقَدَ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا And indeed, he fails who corrupts his own self. Meaning, he corrupts it by way of sins, iniquities, and disobedience. He neglects it and leaves it to do what it pleases. Due to this, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, يَوْمَ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ مَا سَعَى وَبُرْرِزَةِ الْجَحِيمُ لِمَنْ يُرَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, the day when man shall remember what he strove for and hellfire shall be made apparent in full view for everyone who sees. A'udhu billahi min an He said, and hellfire shall be made apparent, meaning it will appear in full view for everyone who sees, meaning he will see it with his eyes in this worldly life. We cannot see the fire. He has not seen the fire that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned. It is from the world of the unseen. We believe in it and we do actions that will help us avoid it while we do not see it. However, in the hereafter, the person will see it with his eyes right before his face and hellfire shall be made apparent after it had been from the realm of the unseen and was hidden. It will be made apparent and appear before the people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ تَغَى وَآتَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ الْجَهِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, then for him who transgressed all bounds and preferred the life of this world, verily his abode will be hellfire. What an evil abode. I seek refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from this. His abode is the fire, and he will have no other abode besides it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for security, meaning security from the fire. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ As for him who feared standing before his Lord. He was afraid of standing before his Lord for the reckoning. Every servant shall meet him and stand before him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call, to him, will call him to account. That is for him who feared standing before his Lord. Meaning, he feared it in the worldly life. And thus did actions and prepared for the meeting with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, وَنَحَ النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْحَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَعْوَى And restrained himself from impure evil desires and lusts. Verily, paradise will be his abode. It will be his permanent residence, paradise, the expanse of which is that of the heavens and the earth. As for the fire and refuge is sought with Allah, it is tight, miserable, severe, evil, and painful. Paradise will be his abode, meaning it will be his permanent residence and he will not desire to leave. It will be his abode forever. So what is the difference between he whose abode is the fire and he whose abode is paradise? It is a tremendous difference that the mind cannot fathom. This is the categorization of the people on the day of judgment, a party in paradise and a party in the blazing fire. The reason is the actions of the person in this worldly life, either good or bad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made time for his believing slaves in which they can draw near to him by way of acts of obedience and performing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made obligatory upon them. So they will be successful in attaining the pleasure of Allah and they will enter his paradise on the day of judgment. As for if they are negligent regarding what their Lord has commanded them, regarding what their Lord has commanded them with, and they follow their desires and squander the obligations of Allah, committing what Allah has made impermissible, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them. A fire, meaning hell, whose fuel is men and stones over which are appointed angels stern and severe, who do not, they do not disobey from executing the commands they receive from Allah, but do that which they are commanded. SubhanAllah. You, O Muslim, are in the hands, uh, are in the month 
and the doors have been opened for you. You are in this month, and the doors have been opened for you, and the paths to paradise have been made smooth for you in this month. As the Prophet ﷺ has informed us, the doors of the fire are closed in this month, and the doors of paradise are open for the believers. The doors of the hellfire are closed off from the believers during this month, and they are devout. They are devout them there and they devote themselves afwan. They devote themselves to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the doors of paradise are open. On the authority of Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا جَاءَ رَمَضَانَ فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ وَصُفِتَتِ الشَّيَاطِينَ Uh, when Ramadan comes, the, the doors of paradise are open and the doors of the hellfire are closed and the devils are chained. Now, I mean, this is reported by Bukhari and Muslim. In another narration, he says, Futihat abwaab rahmah. Futihat abwaab rahmah. The doors of mercy are open. And this was reported by Muslim. In another narration, he said, Futihat Abawab Sama. The doors of heaven are open. As for the people of misery, the doors of the fire are perpetually open for them because they do not take advantage. They do not take advantage and they do not acknowledge this month, nor do they acknowledge other than it. They only concern or their only concern is their bellies, their desires and that which will increase their portions in this fleeting dunya. These people do not value this month or other than it. All their days and months are only a means for loss for them. While they enjoy the faculties, they enjoy the faculties of intellect, hearing, and sight, and the path has been made clear for them. However, they are blinded from it, so their hearts do not benefit from it, nor do, they, do their ears or eyes do to this they will say on the day of judgment, Lo kunna nasma'u aw na'aqilu ma kunna fi ashab al-sa'ir. Had we but listened or used, or used our intelligence, we would not have been among the dwellers of the blazing fire. Meaning, had we listened with the listening of acceptance and used our minds to understand, for they have minds and hearing. However, they, their minds and hearing, did not benefit from this. Thus, it was as if they did not have them. Had we but listened with the listening that benefited us, or used our intelligence, while intelligence that benefited us, mm -hmm. with the intelligence that benefited us, Afwan, we would not have been among the dwellers of the blazing fire. This is because none of the dwellers of the blazing fire except the deaf, dumb, and blind who have no good in them, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for security. In summary, this is a tremendous opportunity in your life, O Muslim. So take advantage of it. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist you upon righteous actions during it, meaning the month of Ramadan. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for acceptance of those actions and increase in his bounty. Indeed, he who catches the month of Ramadan, and for him who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it possible to benefit from it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon him a tremendous favor to which nothing is equivalent. By Allah, those who have millions and own buildings and property do not have the equivalent of it. By Allah, nothing is equivalent to this month for the one to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants success even if he doesn't own anything from the dunya or have any money. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favors him with this month, then he will profit. And he is a true merchant. He is truly wealthy. The wealthy one is not the person who owns this dunya. For if he loses the hereafter, then he is poor, because he will lose this life and the hereafter. The dunya does not belong to anyone. The dunya is fleeting 
and passes quickly. It is like the path upon which all the people pass and they leave it for others. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us and you success in taking advantage of our time and hastening towards acts of obedience and repentance from Mm -hmm. sins and iniquities. And may prayers and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family and his companions, ajma'een. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Subhanaka lahumma wa bihamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.